Hi everyone and welcome back. This video is a compilation of random hacks and DIYs that I've collected over the years. You can learn how to make a bath bomb clay, lip balm out of cheese, some very satisfying water bubbles, and many other things. The best part is that these can all be done using basic household items, which are easily found in supermarkets or discount stores. The first one is a clay for making bath bombs in any shape or scent you like. This is based on the baking soda clay recipe from this video, so please watch that too if you want to have a regular version for sculpting. Start by adding 2 tablespoons of baking soda into a pot, followed by 1 tablespoon of cornstarch. Then add 1 tablespoon of shower gel, shampoo or liquid soap. Heat this up on low heat and be sure to keep stirring all the time. The initial consistency is supposed to look quite liquid, however you can add a bit more baking soda if you feel that it's too watery. This clay only comes together with heat, so the trick is to get it hot enough to solidify the clay but without burning the liquid soap. You'll know it's working when the mixture starts to get this sandy texture, almost like frosting. Then just heat it for a few more minutes until it forms a soft ball of clay. Once this has cooled down a bit, you can use food coloring to turn it into any color. I used a raspberry shower gel and that actually gave this a pink tint, which is quite nice. Form the clay into any shape you want and it's best to stick with fairly simple designs. For more tips on working with baking soda clay, be sure to watch the original video here. I made this recipe a few times and noticed that the more soap and baking soda you use, the softer the final texture is. If you use a lot of cornstarch, then the final piece tends to be harder. This actually feels exactly like a lush bubble bar and I'm almost certain that this is very similar to the recipe they use. My version of course is a lot cheaper to make and you can customize these using essential oils, edible glitter or anything else you can think of. You can see that it dissolves really nicely in water and has this soft soapy texture. The next hack is how to make these incredibly satisfying water bubbles. I've covered this one on my channel before, but this was many years ago and I think that lots of newer subscribers might have missed it. We're going to make the version that's much easier to clean up, so you'll need a sponge as well. Start by taking off the scrubbing side of the sponge. I began cutting this with a knife, but realized that I could simply peel it away. Now apply a bit of Uhu glue to the sponge and place it glue side down over your tap. This trick only works with Uhu brand glue because it contains a special resin that hardens upon contact with water. In my previous video, I did a few tests, and this original version of Uhu, which contains solvent and comes packaged in a metal tube, is always the best one. As you can see, the water pushes the glue into bubbles, which you can pinch off, play with, or pop. The sponge keeps your tap nice and clean, and there's zero cleaning up to do. You can also reuse the sponge a number of times by applying glue to the areas that haven't been covered up. This brings us to another thing, which I've posted clips of on Shorts and TikTok, that confused and enraged millions of people. This is a 3D printed bottle cap, and if you've been watching my YouTube for a long time, then you obviously know exactly how I did it. I simply applied Uhu to the inside and pushed water out of the bottle to create the same bubble effect. Sometimes I use different colored liquids inside just to change up the look. This is such a simple trick, but the clips always go mega viral because people just have no idea what's going on. And one last thing you can do with Uhu glue is simply place some into your palm and let water flow through it. I find the coolest thing with Uhu bubbles is that you never get the same result twice. Sometimes you get long droplets and other times you get a cluster almost like grapes. Some of these turn out really well and some will just pop right away. Whatever happens, it's a lot of fun and very oddly satisfying. The best way to dispose of these is to throw the dried out bubbles in the bin. Please be mindful of the environment and don't wash them down the sink. This next hack is credited to the TikTok account SC Convict. The creator shares a lot of crazy life hacks that people use in prison and this one is how to make paint using Skittles. 
The funny thing is, I tried something similar many years ago in an attempt to make a scented nail polish, but that failed because nail polish isn't water soluble, so it didn't take the color off. It obviously makes a lot more sense to use water, and it literally only takes a few minutes before the color starts coming off. I think I used a bit too much liquid here, and you should only use a tiny amount to make sure the pigment is as concentrated as possible. Then you have to add a bit of lotion and mix everything up to create paint. Of course, this doesn't have the same coverage as acrylic paint, but it's a fun and very cheap hack to try out. Obviously, the skittles can still be eaten after you've taken the color off. Now moving on to a hack that we used to do all the time at school. You simply need some water balloons and a needle or a pin. I love using my needle felt pieces as pin cushions because they really prevent you from losing sharp pins, especially if you have to transport them around. Take one of the balloons and poke a hole through it. Repeat this as often as you like. Now fill this up as normal and you'll have a water balloon that doubles as a water gun. The easiest way to tie a knot is to stretch the base along your index and middle fingers like this. Then twist it around once and push the thick rubbery part between your fingers. This is great to play with in summer because it doesn't go empty as quickly as a toy and it doesn't pop everywhere like a normal water balloon. The water jet is thin enough not to make a mess, so it's pretty useful if you have kids or toddlers around. The next DIY is how to make putty rubbers using a regular eraser. Full credit for this one goes to the channel Rapid Fire Art and her fantastic tutorial which I highly recommend you watch. This popped up in my recommendations after I made my Japanese clay video, and of course one of the clays was a DIY putty rubber kit. That one was pretty difficult to get right, and I always wondered whether it's possible to make an easier DIY version. The answer is actually absurdly simple, and all you need is a normal solid eraser. You have to start by rubbing it over a clean sheet of paper to get lots of shavings. Since my eraser was already used, I'm going to get rid of these dirty pieces here. You only want to have clean shavings like this. After you have a pile of shavings, you can simply press them into a ball. This was a bit harder than expected, because my eraser must have been one of those that tends to crumble instead of sticking together. However, in the original video, the creator gives several tips on how to get any type of eraser shaving to stick. I ended up rubbing mine down to a powder, and it did come together into a slightly crumbly ball. I don't think this one is ideal for making a bigger piece, but this method for putty rubbers is so genius in its simplicity. This seems like such a fun thing to do if you're bored in class, or if you need to keep your hands busy but you're not allowed to have fidget toys in school. Hack number 5 is how to make lip balm using baby bell cheese. As a throwback to the golden days of DIY EOS on YouTube, the basic recipe for lip balm is simply 70% oil and 30% wax. The oil provides moisture and the wax prevents it from melting. In commercial lip balms, this is usually beeswax, but any type of non-toxic wax will work. The wax covering around a baby bell cheese is definitely food safe, so I realized that it should be perfect for lip balms. Start by washing off any remnants of cheese and dry it well. Then place the wrapper into a small heatproof container and add 2 teaspoons of coconut oil. Coconut oil is always the best for lip balms, but you can also substitute with olive oil. Now heat this slowly until both ingredients are fully combined. Transfer it into a container of your choice and place it in the fridge or freezer to cool. The bright pink color of the baby bell wax is a perfect base for lip product and you don't even have to add any more coloring. The shade gets toned down quite a bit after it's solidified, but it is still noticeable. My lip balm was a tiny bit blotchy here because I didn't let the ingredients melt down fully, so be sure to stir it well until all the oil and wax have combined. There's a trigger warning for this next hack, which is how to make fake blood. I know this seems a bit morbid, but there are many occasions where this could come in useful. 
maybe for Halloween or if you're an art student and you need imitation blood for a photo shoot or project. A lot of DIY versions of blood simply don't look real because people are using things like red ink and water. What you really need is soy sauce. Start by adding this to a bowl, followed by pink and orange food coloring. Give it a stir and you can already see how incredibly realistic this looks. I actually used this recipe for a Halloween TikTok combined with the water bubble trick and it went super viral. Real fake blood is very expensive and I needed at least half a liter so I decided to make it myself. If you need a larger volume, then you can add up to 30% of water in here without losing the overall visual effect. This brings us to the next hack, which is how to remove food coloring from skin. As you can see, just making the few splatters left a bright red stain on my fingers. Anyone who does a lot of baking or crafting with food pigments knows that this is the most stubborn thing to get off. So here's the trick I've been using all these years behind the camera. Simply mix shaving cream and baking soda into a gritty paste. It needs to be thick enough to have an exfoliating effect, so be generous with the baking soda. Now just apply this to your skin and scrub away. You might have to repeat it a few times, but this will get rid of food coloring stains way better than soap. It can also work on furniture or fabric, but be sure to do a spot test first. I once stained a white table with a bright purple slime, and this cleaning paste was the only thing that got it out. So the next hack is not really a life hack, because I can't imagine why you'd ever want to do this, and who even came up with it. All you need are these koala cookies, which I'm a huge fan of, and I think that's the reason I just want to include it in this video. I saw this on a viral TikTok, and supposedly if you shake the box long enough, then you end up with a giant chocolate ball. Like I said, I can't imagine why you'd ever want to do this, but it sounds like a fun thing to do, so let's test it out. Okay, so I have a problem now because the bottom of the box broke, so it's really hard to shake it without the bag coming out. The bottom part of this feels pretty solid, and this was still when it was being shaken in the box. So now let's open this up. Ooh, it's very melted. It's very melted. I think I need a plate for this. <laughs> this is pretty melted, but it is kind of a ball, I guess. Here's the chocolate ball. <laughs> it's not as smooth as the one I saw on TikTok, but it is pretty round and reminds me of those um, refrigerator biscuits that you can make yourself. This is actually like a koala cookie apple. So if you ever wanted to turn a whole box of koala cookies into something that you can eat like an apple, there you go. Last but not least, we have paper mache bowls. This is directly inspired by the Easter egg kits that I filmed earlier this year. If you saw that video, you'll remember that a huge part of the kits seemed kind of redundant and you only really needed the molds. So I always wondered whether it could be possible to replicate the DIY using other objects. I'm going to use tissue paper this time, but of course it also works with toilet paper. Start by separating the layers so you have the thinnest sheets possible. Then tear these into tiny pieces and fill up the inside of a small container. In the original kit, they recommend using a ludicrous amount of toilet paper, but I would say just do as much as you can before you're about to die of boredom. Add one tablespoon of water and then repeat the whole process with a second layer. After you have a thick layer of paper pulp, press out all the liquid and leave it to dry. So I was originally kind of skeptical whether it's even possible to make paper mache without any glue, but the method worked pretty well. In this case, the final piece wasn't quite as smooth, and I think it's because the water didn't have anywhere to escape. I think that using a sieve or something with holes in the base would produce better results. But on the whole, this is pretty decent considering it's literally just tissue paper, and you can easily flatten down the pieces on the outside using paint or nail polish. I hope you like this compilation, and be sure to check out the linked videos down below. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.
Bye.